Hello, I'm Philip Scotto, principal of Wayne Floyd High School. We're here today to greet you, welcome you back to school. I know that some of you are very excited to come back, and some of you are a little anxious to come back. The purpose of today's gathering is to do several things. Number one, to allay any fears or misconceptions you might have about returning to the high school. Number two, to give you a brief overview of the high school. And number three, to give you some satisfaction as to how we're going to answer some of the questions that were asked by parents. First of all, I'd like to give you an introduction to the building. For our, well, for our returning 10th, 11th, and 12th graders, you pretty much know the routine, you know the building. For our 9th graders who are new to the building, we're going to start with following you from the bus as you exit the bus and enter the building. And then the rest of the building, 10, 11, and 12, will follow suit. So here is a slight, slight change in plans. When you exit the, build, the bus, you will have your mask on. Masks will be on during the entire bus ride. As you exit here in either the north, south, or east lots, you will enter the building with masks. Everyone will be socially distanced from first entering the building. Ninth graders will enter through separate ninth grade entrances. We have a ninth grade entrance in the north, and we have a ninth grade entrance in the south. When you first come on day one, we will have assistant principals outside who will be guiding you very clearly. Assistant principals, we will have security guards guiding you to the ninth grade doors. If you arrive in the north entrance, you will leave through the north entrance at the end of the day. So you will know where to go. Same thing with the south, same thing with the east. Any doors you enter will be the doors through which you exit at the end. Once you enter the building, we will ask you to quickly go to class. We want the hallways to be as empty as possible, as quickly as possible. Once you go to first period, breakfast will be there. You'll have breakfast in the first period classrooms. There will be no breakfast cots, again, so that we can enter the halls as quickly as possible. Once breakfast is complete, first period will begin. Classes will follow through the regular part of the day. Students will change classes, and teachers will change classes as well. Certain hallways in the building will be, where feasible, one-way hallways. Again, we're going to try with the structure of our building and the number of people in the building to try to accommodate all of the recommendations from the health department and from the governor's office to keep the place as safe as possible. I want to say first that the assistant principals who are here today, who you'll meet as they ask questions, I'll introduce them then. Each of the assistant principals and I have been here all summer working with the district office to come up with as many plans as possible, which changed constantly as the governor's rulings changed as the summer went on. Everything that we came up with is in the best interest of students and staff to keep everyone as safe as possible and as healthy as possible. Over the last four years, we have made the building safer by eliminating any kind of altercations, um, issues in the hallways, we've kept the hallways emptier, and that has led to increased presence in classrooms and therefore an increase in academic achievement. Now, in order to keep the building safe, it has shifted from those kinds of actions to health and safety regarding this pandemic. Everything that we've done is going to be in the best interest of those students and teachers. Not everyone will be pleased with everything we did. There will be some inconveniences, but we do believe, as you hear the answers to your questions today, that many of the questions will still be unanswered, but we're going to do the best we can to do them all at once. But you will get the feeling that we are now making the building as safe and organized as possible while still addressing the issues of academics. We'll go into some more um, explanations as the questions are asked. Um, what we did was take the majority of the questions and group them into topics. So although you might not hear the answer to your specific question, you will be able to get answers in general that should cover your particular question as well. So we'll start with some of the questions now, and at the end, at the end of the um, session, I will then summarize again with anything that wasn't asked, and um, just close up there. So we'll start with Mr. Fabian, one of the assistant principals. Mr. Fabian, questions? We received several questions surrounding the logistics um, of the hybrid plan. So I have three questions for you. The, the first one, which was frequently asked, was why will students be moving to different classrooms versus staying in one room all day? Yeah. That question was asked several times. The reason is because with the size of the building and the number of students that we do have in the building, as a large high school, um, the schedule cannot accommodate students staying in one room. 
Uh, there would have been conflicts uh, with many of the student schedules, so the best way to do that was continue with the old schedule of having students move uh, from period to period. The second question, can you elaborate on the AA remote BB model and also the ability of students to switch cohorts? Yep. Um, as you know, on the website, you've already had the opportunity as parents and students to uh, decide whether you wanted to do the uh, in-school, in-person uh, learning or the virtual learning. <clears throat> if you chose the in-school learning, uh, the option was we have students in the A group and we have students in the B group. It's on the website as for Alpha, um, and we'll see what Alpha you uh, put you in what group. If you were in the A group, you will come two days a week in person. If you were in the B group, you will come the other two. So A group is Monday and Tuesday, and then Thursday and Friday are the B group. On Wednesday, all students are working from home while teachers are in the building all five days. There will be groups of students who will be attending school five days a week, but those students are specifically notified as to who they are. <clears throat> the students who are coming every day, or the A day and B day, will be doing the remainder of their work at home. So if you are here Monday and Tuesday, and you're home Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, you will be doing virtual assignments. Questions that I saw regarding that um, were asked about grading. How would grading be fair for those students who stay at home and those students who come to school? Well, we're talking about the ones who are in A and B. And the students who are in A group will have their teachers with them for two days a week, and they will be virtual the others. Those teachers will be meeting with those students via Zoom and other um, technologies. Um, you will be graded the same way, and all those grading policies will be devised by the lead, the lead teachers of those departments. The grading policy will be shared with the teachers, will then share them with the students. Um, students who are at home will be graded the same way that students in class will be graded as well. If students aren't comfortable with the hybrid event, can they switch to remote learning? Right now, we're asking that if you made a commitment, you stick to that commitment. Um, right now. The reason is because we have to look at the numbers of students in classes because the whole purpose of this was to socially isolate as much as possible, uh, socially distance rather. If we can socially distance the number of students who apply now, uh, we may be able to accommodate some requests based on very, very specific reasons. And those reasons must be verified. After this session, some parents may want to change their mind. Uh, if that's the reasons you want, if you find reasons during this that you want to change, you can always call district office and those secretaries will direct the calls to the appropriate administrators, uh, at least for the first week that school opens, based on what you may hear today. Mr. Fabian, that's it. Okay. Uh, next we have Ms. Lisa Pichetti. How will the special education program run with the hybrid model? The special education program is in full effect, as is uh, the rest of the program in high school. Again, very specific questions to special ed uh, will be directed to the special ed department and I'll be adapted to Malaysia Walker. Um, some of the special ed classes will be coming five days a week. And again, uh, if your child is affected by that, you will know that uh, by the schedule. Uh, any questions related specifically to special ed would be asked, answered by the special ed department. But the special ed program is in full effect. All accommodations will be given, uh, and everything followed to the letter of the law. Thank you. Ms. McNeil, Jessica McNeil. Yes. Will there be a music program this year? The music program is also in effect. Students are scheduled for music classes. Um, music classes will look a little different because in the music program, the uh, requirement is that they socially distance by 12 feet as opposed to 6 feet. Uh, in order to accommodate that, we have added some rooms uh, for music classes, um, so students are in music classes. I want to make it more clear, uh, since the questions have dealt with the A group and B group and music classes in the schedule, um, all students are, they're scheduled for a class. So if you are scheduled for English 10, whether you're home or in school, you are in the same teacher's class. Right? So that if this ever goes away and we come back to school, you just show up and all the students will be in that class. So if a student has Mr. Scotto on a schedule, but some of you are at home and some of you are in school, when school comes back, we all go into Mr. Scotto's class. So right now, that teacher will be assigned to all of those students. Right? So the same thing with the music program. So yes, they are scheduled. Um, they are in the day. They will follow the plan. And if they have music in the schedule, they will, will go to a music class. Also, 
when Chromebooks are available, can my child receive aid? Yes, we do have 1,000 Chromebooks that we gave up over the summer that were not returned. So we do ask that if someone still has a Chromebook, just call district office and arrange for a drop-off because we have to redo those for the new year because they will not work with the new school year. So if you do still have one of those 1,000 Chromebooks, we do need them so we can give them out again, but update it for the new school year academically. Um, students who don't have Chromebooks, we will give them out. We will give out um, what we can. Um, if you still, there will be a schedule coming out. I have two assistant principals in charge of Chromebook distribution. You'll hear more about that. Um, just keep watching the website for any of these specifics that get updated. Uh, again, as I said, things change constantly and we make the upgrades uh, as we go along. Ms. Kujer? There are multiple questions concerning the cleaning of desks in between periods, and parents would like to know if their students can bring in their own wipes. Desks will be cleaned every day by custodians after school. Um, as was said during the district's presentation, the cleaning materials that are being used have a 24-hour effect. Um, so desks will not be cleaned by our custodians in between every period. However, teachers and students can feel free at their will to clean desks as often as possible. Uh, students may, if they choose, clean their own desks. Um, and the same thing, there are some teachers who want to be cleaning desks, they can do the same. Thank you. Yeah, um, parents also asked if there will be sports this year. All sports are delayed. That is the word, they're being delayed. And Section 11 will let us know when sports resume. And that will also be posted on the website. Thank you. Next we have Ms. Pisano. Mr. Scott, could you please explain the lunch procedures for students in the building this year? Lunch has been one of the questions that has come up quite often, and quite honestly, that was the question that we wrestled with over the summer, because if we kept lunch in the original schedule the way it was, we would have had uh, problems with social distancing. We would not have been able to accommodate uh, all the lunches and still follow the guidelines set by the health department and the, uh, the governor's uh, directives. So what we did, uh, instead of having lunch in periods, for a third period, fourth period, fifth period. So we would have crowds in the lunchroom. We would have to uh, address the room every period. What we did was change the schedule so that all students' academics are in the first seven periods of the day. While a, a, a child is in seven period class, when the bell rings, they will remain in that room. At that point, lunch will already have been delivered to the room, and that last period will be a lunch period. So every single student in this building is required to have lunch a period. So they will have breakfast first and lunch eighth in the room. That will eliminate another changeover in the hallways to keep the hallways as empty as possible, which as I said before was one of our goals. And also, the rooms will already, will already have been socially distanced for seven period learning. Those students will remain in that socially distanced room and those teachers will have lunch duty at that time and monitor the students eating their lunch. That will be a shortened period compared to the others. And at that point, when lunch is over, um, students will be dismissed. Also, during that period, announcements will be made. And any kind of events that, have to, that would have happened in an auditorium or anywhere else will happen via technology in that room. So a principal's presentation, uh, other kinds of announcements, trainings for drills, those will all happen so that academ academics are not affected. So during the eight period lunch, the entire building will hear things at the same time. Thank you. Mr. Cordova. Mr. Scott, several families have concerns about locker usage and student storage during the school day. Uh, first, will students have access to their hallway lockers? And secondly, will students be permitted to use their backpacks during our initial reopening? Lockers are being assigned. Lockers are assigned. They are, when you receive your schedule, you will see your locket number and your combination. Uh, those things will be on the schedule. Uh, we find that most students in the high school don't even use their lockers, but they will all have one. Locker use will be allowed. Um, we have no period where students will go to lockers at the same time, so we don't have to worry about socially distancing in that way. Um, but we do have students who go to the lockers when they feel they need in between classes. Um, we will monitor that. We have not had a socially distant, most students are not at the locker at the same time, so we haven't had a socially distancing issue even before this. Um, so yes, they will be able to um, store things in their lockers. They will store backpacks if they have them in their lockers and take out the books they need. Um, and we will be in the hallways as we always are monitoring. If there are too many students in one section, we will make sure we separate them. So yes, access to lockers with social distancing. Mr. Kennedy. Um, 
Mr. Scotto, typical questions and concerns regarding anxieties from freshmen, freshman parents. Um, is there going to be an orientation or any type of um, invitation or orientation for them? Available at gates or night or day? There, there will be. Um, ordinarily, we have a ninth grade only day, and you may have seen that on the calendar already. Unfortunately, that calendar was made up before the pandemic came in. Um, so we are not having a typical ninth grade only day. And I know that many ninth graders are anxious about coming into a huge building, but let me put that fear to rest right now. Um, and we're gonna have several ways we're gonna do that. But the first way is to let you know that ninth graders will not be using the entire high school. It's an extremely large building. Ninth graders will use only one section of it, and that is the ninth grade wing, otherwise known as the freshman academy. As I said before, the Freshman Academy will have its own entrance, north and south. When those um, students enter the ninth grade academy, um, they will realize that they have classes either on the first floor or the second floor um, in a very limited area. Um, the ninth grade office is also there. Where Mr. Kennedy and Mr. Filicetta are the two assistant principals for the ninth grade. Students will be familiar with them right from the beginning. They'll be the ones guiding them when they get off the bus to the two uh, areas, one north, one south. Um, in addition to that, I know that some people, we had uh, about 25 people uh, request um, some kind of access to the building. I am not allowing that during the actual school uh, session, when school's in session, because now that we're only two days a week, um, we are not taking days away from academics that people just toward the building. So in order to put people's minds at ease, because we have a very uh, manageable number of requests at this point, um, we are, if you watch the website, going to post that next Thursday, August 27th, we will have Group A come in. So if you know your letters are in the Group A letters um, from A to K, um, we'll check the website to make sure of the letters. You will come from 9 to 12 on August 27th, and in groups of 10, all the assistant principals that you see here will be on hand to take children, students from the parking lot, which will arrive in the north, arrive in the north, you would be met by an AP, they'll put you in groups of 10 and take you through the high school on uh, ninth grade wing. Um, so you will see the ninth grade, you'll be familiar with your entrances, you'll be familiar with the location of classrooms, um, and you'll be familiar with the library location. You'll be part of the tour. It'll be a very limited and specific tour. Um, the group B will come from 12 to 3. So that is the other way that we are going to be introducing students to the ninth grade. A second way, we um, always have a video for a freshman transition. Um, we finished filming part of that uh, yesterday. We had to make uh, additions to that video based on the pandemic and the COVID restrictions. That video will also be posted um, most likely on Monday. Um, so you'll see um, that information on the website uh, as well. The August 27th plan for the number of people who want to come, and that could be the 25 people who requested it, or it could be all 800 new freshmen. Uh, 400 in the morning, 400 in the afternoon. If that happens, again, you will be masked, you will be socially distanced, and you will be taken on a short tour to familiarize yourself with the ninth grade wing and allay any fears or anxieties you may have about entering this new building. Mr. Phillips, sir. Can students take electives including ROTC? ROTC will run, and students may take electives. Uh, electives are in the schedule. Electives this year are going to be uh, the ones that students need for uh, credit bearing, uh, moving their credits along towards graduation to stay on track for graduation. There will be electives that students may want, but they don't need, that will not be able to fit into the schedule this year. In those cases, guidance counselors will be making up on um, certain uh, arrangements so those parents can call the guidance counselor uh, for any kind of uh, upgrade or updating of the schedule that those students need to accommodate their wishes. Um, basically, everything that we can offer is being offered in the seven period day. A lot of the things that people would, would have wanted and received in the past will not be able to be accommodated this year. Uh, any more questions? Yes, Mr. Scott. How are CT programs operate this year? The CTE programs are operating, they're in the schedule. Um, right now the schedule is still in flux, it is being finalized. Uh, hopefully we'll have that to go public next week. Um, and again, it's based on the numbers of people who will be coming in person and those who will be virtual. That will affect the schedule even from now till next Tuesday. So I can't make definite answers, give you definite answers for that. But we are planning to have our CTE courses. Um, not everyone 
at this time is populated and will run. Um, but again, students will see that in their schedules. Um, as far as the ones that are going virtual, we're going to do our best to make sure that the courses that require hands-on activities are able to be run in certain ways where the students will get what they need. Uh, if that changes, we will also let the students know. Councils will be calling them and we'll make adjustments in their schedule. Will there be clubs this year at the high school? Clubs like sports are also um, delayed this year. Um, we're going to wait to see um, how we can run them, uh, which ones can be run virtually and which can't. Um, so right now, also on hold will be clubs as well as sports. Again, as things change, as restrictions are lifted, we will make accommodations for all these things to go back because our goal is to reinstitute everything that we had in the high school to give the student a full high school experience. So with that, I want to thank the assistant principals for the work they've done all summer. I want you to know that um, the teachers are ready to come back and work. Um, the teachers are ready to address the students in person and at home. The students, the teachers will be monitoring their students. They'll be teaching in-class students as well as the virtual students. Uh, teachers will be here five days a week. They'll be doing double work because they'll also be creating on Wednesdays uh, their lessons. They'll be posting their lessons and they'll be grading uh, all kinds of lessons that the students did in class and at home. And they'll be making contact with the students um, in addition to the times they do that after school every day for extra help. So I do want to thank the teachers for what they did last year and uh, let you know that uh, your child's success was because of what these people did in the classroom. And I know that they're going to do the same thing when they come back uh, in September. Um, I also want to let everyone know, uh, parents, that uh, if any of the questions you asked were not answered, um, you can always um, write to me uh, separately this time, uh, and I'll try to answer them based on the information we have at the time. I do have to let you know that not every request uh, this year, uh, more than ever, uh, can be accommodated because we cannot always mesh them with the guidelines of the health department, the directors of the governor, and what we know uh, is the status of the building by its layout and by the population and the number of students who attend. Uh, we have close to 2,800 students in the building, so that a, re a request, no matter how many times it's asked or how many people it's asked to, uh, can be accommodated. But we will always try to work around it um, to try to get um, everybody as close to what they want as possible. So with that, uh, we thank you. Um, we appreciate the opportunity to fill you in. Again, let me know if there's anything else you are curious about. Keep checking the website for the ninth grade visits uh, and everything else that is going uh, on for the rest of uh, the month especially. So thank you and goodbye. And one more thing. We just received a question asking for clarification on the mask policy. I know in my introduction I did say that students would have masks on on buses and when they exited the bus they would still have their masks on upon entry into the building they would also have masks on. I want to make it very clear that in the high school students will be wearing masks in the building everywhere they go including class. Teachers will be giving students opportunities to have break times for the mask. The break times will be at appropriate times and based on what the teacher knows about the population of the room and the layout of the room. Each classroom will be different. Some may have just a few students in the room, some may be maxed at 15 socially distanced. It will be up to the teacher to give those breaks um, for accommodations for students to be able to um, answer questions, uh, they'll be eating their lunch and so on. The teachers will be able to in other periods also give it their discretion and they'll be getting more direction on this when they come back on how to give those breaks. So students will be required to wear masks throughout the day based on the directives of the health department. Um, we also want to make sure that everyone knows that the uh, typical uh, disciplinary policy will be followed, especially when it comes to issues of uh, insubordination that might take place. Um, so masks are a priority, uh, as is social distancing. So I hope that clarification uh, helps and that we make sure that all these things are followed. The other thing that um, someone asked is, what are we doing with um, testing? Uh, as students wait for the bus before they get on the bus, they should also be taking the survey, the health survey, that will be on the website. Um, students should take that survey, they're required to take it before they arrive, as are every, uh, the adults who enter the building um, are required to take it. We take it every day, um, everyone will take the health survey. Um, the question then came up, well, what happens when students are um, 
isolated during the day, for lack of a better word, because they're coming up with symptoms. There will be a place in the building where we will send students um, with consultation with the nurse. Uh, we will then determine when that student uh, has to go home and uh, parents will be called to pick that child up. Uh, the same thing will happen to adults. Uh, anyone who shows any symptoms during the day will be placed in an isolated location and sent home. Um, any other questions, again, you can let me know. I hope those uh, late clarifications help. Thank you again.